So what do you do when you're faced with a hundred bottles with polysyllabic names in French? Wine educator at New York's Windows on the World, Kevin Zraeli, understands your frustration. A man who has taken some of the stuffiness and some of the mystery out of wines. The complete wine course, and it is the complete wine course. The highest wine cellar in the world. There are so many wines out there. Don't get just caught up in one. Try a lot of different wines. Start happier, tasting different real wine. good. Yes. <laughs> you could not have enough time in the day to taste all the wine that's out there in the world. Before Kevin, the average American didn't pay attention to wine, period. I always like to say that I started off in wine as an altar boy, you know, nipping in the back. I moved to a area outside of Woodstock, New York, to go to college. And I, I was looking for beer money. And I found a restaurant uh, to become a waiter. That's how it began, from waiter to bartender to wine. And I, I really had a passion for teaching. Put them together, I started teaching wine. New York City, the wine capital of the world. And I'll never forget it. Somebody said, go see Barbara Kafka. She's downtown. They're opening a restaurant in the World Trade Center. I could write a book on that one, waiting to see Barbara Kafka. Anyhow, I finally get to meet Barbara Kafka. I think it took about maybe 30 minutes, and she realized I'd done my homework. It all starts at the top with people like Joe Bao and Barbara Kafka. They knew wine. They knew restaurants. Joe had a, a vision about wine that he wanted Kevin to, to see through, this idea that wine should be a showpiece. Kevin took it to a place that none of us could have ever imagined it could go. They gave me the freedom to do what I wanted to do. They didn't want a sommelier. The term was cellar master. I've looked at Kevin Zarelli as, first of all, as the most charismatic wine educator really in the world. And he started teaching not just professionals, but consumers. He took all of the snobbery out of wine and just said, look, anybody can do this. Kevin's Windows on the World wine book. I mean, it was the watershed book in, in terms of introductory education for wine enthusiasts. I didn't have a book when I started off, so I wrote it for myself so that other people wouldn't be intimidated by wine. It's the Bible from Windows on the World. The roadways are pretty much cut off. They can't see where they're going. Terrorist-related attacks. After September 11th, the question I had was, do I continue the Windows on the World Wine School? For what reason? It didn't mean anything at that point in time. Everything was just in a blur. Kevin lost close friends on that day. He lost, in some ways, his life's work, the, the cellar. The place was not just a place, but it was his home for decades. But because of family and friends, Windows friends and my own personal family, we decided to keep the Windows in the World Wine School going. And it was the best decision I ever made. Ready? One, two, three, give me the name of the great! <laughs> that wasn't very strong. Did you feel that that was strong? I didn't feel that was strong at all. We're gonna do it one more time? It's all too beautiful. It was never about wine. It was about everything else that had to do with wine. The history, the geography, the chemistry, the people, the food. I can go on and on and on, but it was one big package. You're gonna find out tonight, are you in love with Pinot Noir? That's enough wine talk from you people. Here he is talking about Burgundy. Was that 1961 Chateau Lafitte Rothschild one of the best wines that you've ever had? Oh, go on, right, give it a round of applause. Every year he keeps teaching that class. Every year he rewrites that book. Every year he comes up with a new reason for us to look up to him and say, how does he do it? It's all too beautiful.